Chris, I think uh, 21 turnovers ties a season high for you guys. What were you seeing in that aspect there? I mean, uh, we just got to take care of the ball. Uh, we got to do better with that. And, uh, you know, give them credit. Uh, they beat us. So that's it. We just got to take care of the ball and do better. Chris, with your application are being a part of the starting lineup now. Are they asking you to do anything specific? And, and is it difficult kind of fitting in with the offensive rhythm that that other lineup has had for such a long time? Um, like I say, I'm embracing this role. So uh, I, say, I said this when I first came here, when I got traded. I say whatever the team need me to do, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and step up and, and do it. And uh, you know, in this case, it's defensively. Uh, you know, just going out there, be physical. Um, you know, be 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 a pesky defender. Uh, and, and I like it. I like it. I like that that part of me as a player. Uh, I think uh, you know that just uh, make me better as a player. So. I'm embracing that role, and I'm, you know, I'm willing to to go out there every night and, and uh, bring it. Hey, Chris. Uh, just obviously, Terry got going in there. Just what did you see from him? How difficult did he make life on you guys in the second half, especially? He's an NBA player. You know, that's what happens when you get when you let an NBA player get hot. You know, it's it's, it's hard to stop him. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, just want to ask you as far as. Um, Chris, the, uh, the team defense just didn't look like it was too connected there. Did you feel that way too as far as uh, trying to put pressure on the ball? I mean, I, I felt like we're definitely getting better. Uh, you know, um, the turnover was what, what killed us today. I think, uh, you know, yeah, we got to clean up some, some stuff defensively and offensively. But I feel like defensively, you know, with you know being physical, that's that's helping. Uh, Chris, speaking of the turnovers, does it um, does it feel like it might take a little time um, for for this this group to kind of adjust to playing together and and having that rhythm offensively? You know, uh, that's part of basketball. You know, today was the night that we we couldn't take care of the ball. You know, that's that's the only answer I got for you. You know, turnover happens. You know, of course we're not. We we try not. We try not to do that, but you know it happens. Chris, in español. Ah. Cae el equipo de cierta manera sin saberlo, quizás en excesos de de confianza cuando se juegan esta clase de partidos. Creo que nosotros como equipo eh, tenemos que jugar al máximo por 48 minutos. Uh, creo que tenemos que mantenernos juntos, eh, seguir ayudándonos uno al otro, eh, controlar el pace eh, y sí, ser mejor, ser mejor. Esta noche eh, ofensivamente eh, tuvimos mucha bola perdida. Yo creo que eso fue una de la una de las mayor causa de la derrota que tuvimos hoy. Pero yo creo que a medida del tiempo nosotros vamos a seguir mejorando y, y vamos a ir a la casa a ver film y, y vamos a seguir aprendiendo y tratar de, de no cometer esos errores que son son errores pequeños, o sea, son errores que son controlables, ¿me entiendes? So. Aaron. Turnovers seemed to kill you guys tonight. What was it that you were seeing that was happening there, especially in the fourth quarter? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think we just gave the ball away. I don't think they did anything um, that really just made us turn the ball away, uh, turn the ball over. I think we we're just we we're just too careless with the ball all night. Um, on that note, uh, you don't see Domas have 11 turnovers like ever. I mean, how just how surprising was that to, to, to see a lot of them come from him tonight? Yeah, I mean, like I said, as a, as a team, I think uh, we, we were careless as a whole. And um, sometimes we might have gotten too deep. But like I said, that's something that we can control. Um, and obviously, you get deep in this in this league, and you're going to get six, eight hands around you. Um, so they did, they did a good job of collapsing. But um, it starts with what we're doing. And you guys, uh, you obviously know what Terry Rozier is capable of. Um, how difficult did he make life there, especially in that second half? 
Yeah, I mean, um, he's one of those guys that can get to a spot. Um, I mean, we have to just try to be more disruptive. Uh, obviously, he didn't shoot the three well tonight, but he did everything else. And, um, you know, just being able to get in our paint, collapsing and uh, getting downhill, getting to the free throw line. Um, I think he uh, he hurt us in a lot of ways. Yeah, from your standpoint, um, when did you feel like the game got out of control at the end? Uh, I mean, probably after my turnover, I think. I mean, regardless of how bad we were playing, we were up. 90% of the game, I would say, and uh, like I said, at the end, um, you know, Terry hits, I think Terry hit a three, then I turn over, they get a layup, or no, PJ, PJ gets a dunk, then I turn over, they get a they get a layup, so, I mean, I would say there, other than that, um, I don't think we have the game in full control, but, you know, we were up, like, four to six points throughout the most of the game, and then those two things happen, we lose the lead, and then we lose the game. Darren, last week a bad loss to Portland. Tonight another bad loss. Is there any themes to p between both those both both those games? I mean, I don't think those games are even close to the same. Uh, I mean, we gave up 100 and what 30 to Portland. Um, I mean, I don't think we're terrible defensively, but um, our turnovers is what hurt us, and we didn't shoot the ball particularly well today. So um, I don't think those games are obviously we can throw them in the column of bad losses, but I think that those games are totally different. Darren, you've talked before about having you have to have a short term memory and over the course of an eighty two game season. Is this just one of those that you wake up tomorrow and forget about, or do you want a game like this to maybe sting a little bit more to learn from it? Uh, I mean, it's funny because I was telling them, like, obviously I don't think we've had one of those bad just stretches of games, but at the end of the day, you you, you soak in a in a loss like this and it can pile on to six losses in a row. So uh, for me personally, when I walk out this building, I'm not thinking about this game again. So uh, I think it's to each their own on, on a subject like that. But for me personally, once, once I walk out of here, I mean, we have another game tomorrow. We're playing against a good Orlando team. So what am I thinking about this game for? Uh, Darren, with the change in the starting lineup, like you, you guys, you, the offense was, seemed fine in Memphis. But tonight, it was just disjointed and, and out of rhythm. Is there kind of an adjustment period to, to finding your rhythm with, with you know someone else in, in the group? Uh, no, I mean, Chris started a game in the preseason. Uh, we've done some things in practice. I mean, we had, a, like you said, a good game uh, last game. Um, obviously, like I said, I think a lot of it was just us being careless with the ball. I mean, I was 0 for 5 in the first quarter. I don't think whoever's in the lineup doesn't affect that. So, um, I mean, we didn't play well tonight, and I, it has nothing to do with any type of lineup change or anything like that. Usually, you know, back-to-backs is kind of, you know, a pain or whatever, but how satisfying is it that after a game like this you get to come back tomorrow and try again? I mean, those are usually the, the, the good things about back-to-backs. Whenever you don't play well in that first game, um, like you said, you have to have a short-term memory because – you have another game tomorrow. So, um, like I said, we, we want to – obviously, tomorrow we'll watch film on some of this, but we have to prepare for the next game. So, um, get what we get out of this game, whatever we whatever our teaching moments are, and uh, move on to the next one because Orlando's coming in here. They've played well uh, this year, and we, we, we have to be ready or else it can look like the rest of our back-to-backs have this year. Barely over 50% uh, in the paint tonight. You guys were 24 or 47. What did you see on those looks from you guys? You know, we just didn't make them. Uh, obviously, you know, guys like Nick Richards and Miles is at the rim, and those guys are athletic, but I think there are times where we just, just didn't make shots at the rim, and obviously we're trying to tip it in. And um, I just think from the standpoint of a lot of what we did tonight, I don't think we were good. De'Aaron, I know you said you haven't had any prolonged losing streaks or anything, and you're right, but it feels a lot of times like you guys are taking like two steps forward, one step back. Do you feel that where like just as you guys start to gain some momentum, things kind of fall apart a little bit? Yeah, and that's where we have to be consistent on both sides of the ball. I mean, Memphis, we have Atlanta where we didn't play well in the first half, and the second half we were great. And then Atlanta, we, I mean, uh, Memphis, we played probably our best game of basketball this entire season, and then we come back and have a game like this. So uh, for us, you want to try to be as consistently good as you can possibly be on both, in, on, on both ends of the court, and we have to control the things that we can control. Uh, we can control our turnovers. We can um, control our shot selection or whatever shot we're getting. Uh, we can control our rebounding. Uh, we have to be able to do those things for as long as we can, and 
obviously if you come into a game you just shoot 30 percent like that that is what it is that's that's basketball at the end of the day but uh, we have to be able to control the things that we can control and put ourselves in the best position to win you gotta give uh charlotte a lot of credit uh they came in here and they had a game plan they kind of stuck to it uh, but i would i'd be wrong if i didn't say uh, that i didn't think that we performed to our level of ability and that happens night in and night out but uh <clears throat> the first thing that jumps out to me is our 21 turnovers i mean you have you have 21 turnovers in a game where all of them probably were unforced um literally we just i don't know just couldn't hold on to the ball <laughs> and uh and that and then you know jumping in there we just kept leaving our feet you know possession after possession and throwing it to the ball throwing the ball to the to the hornets uh, to the other opponent and or picking up charges but to have 21 turnovers in a ball game uh, especially when the turnovers aren't forced, it just takes away your opportunity to score. Um, next thing, and again, in, in a situation like this, uh, we're 30th in free throw percentage, uh, and we shoot 58% in a you know one two possession game. That that's tough. Um, <clears throat> And, and those two things right there are controllables that we that we didn't do a good job of controlling off, offensively. Uh, you give uh, Rozier credit, you give Bridges credit, uh, P.J. Washington, the rest of their crew credit. They came in, they all had big games. Um, and you know, in the second half, we couldn't contain the dribble drive. Possession after possession after possession, they were getting into the paint and finishing at the rim, whether they were finishing with an and one or a layup. Uh, it didn't matter. They ended up scoring 34 points in the paint in the second half without a post-up threat. And the tough part about it is, you know, we, we told these guys that, you know, they obviously have um, one um, – they, they got a lot of guys that can shoot the three. Terry shoots it at a high level. And we didn't do a good job shrinking and helping our teammates uh, contain the dribble drive. And um, – you know, allowing them to get to the rim as much as we did uh, really hurt us. And like I said, to a tune of 34 points in the paint in the second half without a post-up a post up uh, threat. Uh, and then, you know, just a it was it was our execution down the stretch and our sense of urgency on both sides of the ball uh, was 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 alarming. It was it wasn't good. And I say that because, again, we probably had two or three unforced turnovers down the stretch where we didn't even give ourselves a chance to shoot the ball, uh, which led to them getting easy baskets in transition. And then our half-court defense, I mean, we were literally just standing on the weak side of the floor, and we give up a stone-cold layup uh, in a crucial part of the game. And so... You know, to, to not have an awareness, a sense of urgency, uh, it, it, it's not a, it was not a good feeling being out there and, and being a part of it. And I, obviously I have a lot to do with it too because uh, I, I did not have our guys ready apparently. Mike, we saw in the first half you guys really seemed like you lacked energy. Uh, Malik played only five minutes in the first half, third quarter. I don't know if he said something to you guys on the bench, and then in the timeout you guys had an exchange. Just what was going on there? Just heat of the moment stuff. Was there something else happening? Yeah, no, it's uh, heat of the moment. Uh, Malik and I, I think everybody has seen it, uh, but Malik and I have gotten into exchanges before. This is not the first time, and I, uh, I, I bet a lot of money it won't be the last time. So, um, so that's not a big deal. I, I you're right. We, I mean, we. The first five out there, I thought they initially did a good job, and then, you know, once we made subs, I, I like we were throwing underhand passes, and I, I mean, it, it was the, I, in my opinion, probably one of the laziest, loosest games that we've had, where we decided to play that way, you, you know, and. Um, and it gave them confidence, 
And anytime you give an NBA team confidence, uh, especially with, you know, they, they struggled scoring, they're missing a handful of guys, but they're NBA players and it's an NBA team. And Cliff does a nice job with that group. He continues to get them to try to play hard. But when you give a team confidence like we gave them tonight, uh, things like that can turn into a loss. Some of those uncharacteristic things, I mean, Domas, I mean, that's probably never going to have another 11 turnover game. Do, do you feel like maybe that, because of how much you rely on him on the offensive end and to get the offensive going, do you feel like that maybe caused some confusion in your group at all? I, I, I don't... I don't think it, I don't think the turnovers were confusion. I just I just think we, you know, when I think of it, we just lost the ball, Sean, or, or we jumped in there and ran guys over. We jumped in there and tried to make passes, and you know, we continually preach, hey, play off it when you drive, come to jump stop, play off of two feet, move the ball, and you know, I did I don't know if we hit enough enough singles tonight. We had a stretch too in the first half where. Um, it, you know, we, we were six for uh, eight at one point in terms of spray threes. And then we got to a point in a stretch of the game where we were catching and holding and then raising up over contested hand or, you know, taking a tough one that was, that was con contested instead of continually trying to hit that paint. Because they do a good job of, of uh, when that ball is on a dribble dive, they do a good job of this. And there are a lot of simple passes that you can make. We call it hitting singles. And uh, I don't think we hit enough singles in, in, in that first half, and it led to some tough shots. And um, it got them confident, kept them in the game, and uh, they obviously got the win because of a lot of different reasons, not just because of that. Mike, it's no secret that you guys have not done well in back-to-backs this year. Is yeah. this a blessing or a curse that you guys have the Magic coming in here tomorrow? And, and what are you looking for your guys to kind of bounce back from this? Well, uh, the first thing is to do a better job with the ball. You know, it's, it's going to be hard. If we give up 21 turnovers uh, tomorrow, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard for us to, to win a game. Um, we definitely have to do that. Uh, these guys are big. They, they do, you know, Charlotte did a, does a great job of getting in the paint. These guys do too. These guys uh, have guys that can put the ball on the floor and, and, and get in that paint and and finish. And uh, we can't. We're going to have to do a better job of containing the dribble. Uh, uh, and then you know we're going to have to do a better job of bringing a sense of urgency from the beginning until the end. And not play as loose and or as lackadaisical as we did as a group throughout the, the course of that, that first half and that times in the, in the second half, too. Mike, 58% from the free throw line to nine, I think around 73% from the line. Uh, yeah. We've seen in practice the, the free throws, if they miss, the entire team uh, runs. But is there something, is it a mental issue that you think is holding this team back with the free throws? Or how do you coach, I guess, a team to get over that issue? Uh, that's, you know, that's a good question. That, um, we're, we're shooting the same amount, if not more, free throws this year than we did last year. Um, we just gotta have guys go up to the line and knock it down. I, you know, I sometimes you you worry and 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 again, I thought we were real loose tonight, and so maybe it might have been a mental thing tonight. I I don't know, uh, but. Obviously, we're 30th in the league in free throw percentage, and so uh, we're not doing a good job collectively with it. And maybe we got to shoot more than what we're what we're shooting. We got to maybe stop practice, I guess, at times just to shoot two two in a row or four in a row or something like that to get the guys to try to lock in. Uh, because uh, right now, for us to be 30th with the shooters that we have on this team um, is not good. Mike, uh, Chris seemed to play <clears throat> pretty well. I'd like to kind of get your assessment of, of him. And I, I, but I do wonder if it's possible that, you know, making a change in the lineup, like if maybe there's an adjustment period for, for certain groups to kind of find the rhythm um, offensively, do you think that might be at play at all? No, uh, it, it, because the, the, to me the turnovers didn't have much to do with, like, uh, guy, wrong reads or something. It wasn't like a, a guy started to go back door, but then he came to the top of the floor and the, the ball was thrown out of bounds. 
it literally was dribble and throw it to the other team or deflection and the other team gets it, you know, or charge or us leaving our feet. So I, I don't think it had anything to do with that. I mean, he first game, we Chris has started with those four guys three games now. The first time he did it was at Dallas, and we scored 133 points, I think, or something like that. The second time was at Memphis, and it was one of our highest offensive ratings uh, of the season, and then, then tonight. So, so I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, I, I just think, you know, we weren't there mentally for the 48 minutes that we needed to be there, and that was why the turnovers happened. And, and I thought Chris was good. You know, again, we're putting him on quote unquote, uh, uh, our, our best guy a lot of, or our opponent's best guy a lot of times, that's a guard. Um, and I thought he was physical. I thought he did it without, without fouling. Um, and then he took, for the most part, he, he took the right shots. I don't think he forced anything. I, shoot, he played, uh, uh, he played 29 and a half minutes. He had seven, re seven rebounds, four assists. Um, so I, I thought he, he had a pretty good night for us. Yeah, Coach, how yeah. frustrating was the second half for you defensively after the positive progress you guys had made in those last six quarters coming into the night, and where do you feel like your shortcomings were? Uh, it, it was frustrating, but I, I thought our offense, uh, for, for back it up, we didn't. The frustrating part, we didn't. Do, we didn't contain the dribble drive. That that was frustrating, and we didn't. What I call shrink and help in the gaps enough. We're guarding our guy. We're small. We're staying hugged up with our guy, and so there's a lot of room to drive the basketball. And we had been doing a pretty good job of sitting in the gaps or playing big. So that part was frustrating. Uh, but on top of that, I felt our uh, our turnovers. Um, really hurt us in the second half, hurt, hurt our defense because I mean, when we turned the ball over, they were getting out and it was three on one, four on two, and they're getting to the rim and laying it in. So those two areas uh, bothered me with our defense. Um, if we take care of the ball a little bit better, our defense is a little bit better. Uh, and then the biggest thing, like I said, is just the dribble drives and the lack of uh, sitting in the gaps against this team tonight.